Welcome back. We're working our way down towards the end of our house building series. And if you haven't already run across them, we've got a lot of videos before the tile that will show you pretty much every step we've gone through to get the project to this point. But today we're talking about tiling shower walls. The first thing that I want to point out is that the water in this shower pan stayed in the pan overnight, five inches deep, didn't lose a drop, and so now we know that it's safe to proceed with putting the finished surface, which is the tile and the grout, on the walls over the top of this Schluter waterproofing system. If you're interested in how we did that, check the previous videos, and there's plenty of information in case you're thinking of doing something like this at your house. It's interesting to me that in much of life and in every bit of construction, there's a delicate dance between form and function. It's easy to get so focused on one that you neglect the other. But ideally, both of these critical components for success are on one's mind all of the time. And nowhere is that more important, in construction at least, than in tiling the floor and the walls of a shower. When a tile setter is thinking about the form or the appearance of his tile work, the first thing to think about is layout. In the same way that in real estate, location, location, location is the mantra, for a tile setter, layout, layout, layout is the thing that must always be kept in mind when you're trying to figure out whether or not your product is going to be acceptable. When I say layout, primarily what I'm talking about is the straightness of the lines, the layouts of the joints, and whether or not the spaces between the tiles are even. Now right here, Phil is stoning the edges of a cut tile. It's like routing the edges of a piece of lumber. It eases or chamfers or makes softer to the touch an edge that could otherwise be sharp. One of the first things you have to keep in mind when you're laying up a tile wall is that gravity is not your friend. So a couple of advantages. Be sure and ask your supplier if the thin set that you're using to stick the tile to the wall is an anti-sag type of mortar, if it's going to tend to hold the tile in place until it gets hard. And second, use hard plastic spacers and not rubber. Now maybe that's an obvious distinction, but you better make sure that those spacers are going to stay exactly where you want them to be as the weight of the wall increases. And don't get greedy. I mean, Yes, you might be able to go as much as eight feet, but why push it? Go a little less, sleep well at night, come back the next morning and run it on up to the ceiling. There are some guidelines in installing the tiles in wet areas. Now maybe that's self-evident, but a wet area is any place where the tile has to be keeping the water at bay, or at least is the first protective barrier against water. And the first rule is you need a 95% bond between your tile and the substrate if it's going to be living in a wet environment. What that means is back buttering the tile and directional troweling the substrate.
There are a couple of broad general categories of tiles in terms of the way they are manufactured that are important to understand. There are pressed tiles, which are exactly that. They're pressed in molds and then dried and baked and you know, run through kilns depending on exactly what the material is made of. And there are rectified tiles, which are pressed or rolled into their approximate sizes and then cut to exact dimensions. Rectified tiles are always easier to make straight and flat. The tile that Phil is installing comes to us from Florida Tile, which has been a leader in manufacturing porcelain tile since the 1950s. Their tiles are available nationwide, and they're constantly innovating and improving the manufacturing processes and quality of their products. Separate from making beautiful and high quality tile, Florida Tile does an excellent job assisting and educating their customers in the design process. This is pretty, don't you think? I like that little texture on there. Yeah, I love it. It can be a little overwhelming, picking out tiles and grout and trying to come up with a shower or bathroom that you really love and that you're going to love for a long time. And Florida Tile spends a lot of time and effort to help their customers through this process. They donated this tile to us and to our project here. And if you've been enjoying the series, would you do me a favor and just tell them thanks on our behalf on one of their social media pages? And if you're watching this because you're getting ready to undertake a tile project of your own, see if there's a Florida tile showroom in your area or visit them online. They make their products in the U.S. and they're supporters of Essential Craftsmen. They provide Great products and great service as we have learned firsthand. Do you notice Phil is directional troweling the backs of the tile? and just building up the front of the wall of the bench. That's because he needs to bring the material out a little bit to get the front just a little more plumb. And so it's the back of the tile that needs to be available to let the air out as he seats the tile firmly against the thicker buildup of thin set on the front of that bench. The borders of the soap dish are being set in place with a band of factory-made bullnose tile. You need to think about and check on the available trim pieces with the tile that you pick out. Now Schluter Systems has a wide assortment of edge and trim metals that can solve these kinds of problems, but sometimes you want the look of a more traditional banding at the edge of your work, and so be sure that you verify what's available before you dive into your project. The day after the tile is set is the time to start detailing the work. What that means is carefully scraping out or removing the thin set that has oozed up from behind the tile into the joints between the tile in order to make room for the grout that will be happening next. Detailing the tile before grout is a good place for a new person to start on a job. Phil did his time as a boy, 8, 10, 
12 years old, setting up the final product by not ruining the final product with a careless detailing job. It's just one more example where every step has a direct impact on the final product. And in this case, a careless detailer can scrape out too much thin set and penetrate and ruin the waterproof membrane behind the tile. Be careful. Be thorough. Get it right. Putting the tile on the floor is a place where the size of your notch trowel is paramount. And if you think that one notch trowel is going to take care of every application, you're doing it wrong. So check it out, get a pro opinion, and then proceed with caution. Because the floor needs to be perfectly bonded, but you can't squish your joints full of the thin set as you tap the tiles down into flat contact gently with a steel trowel. There's got to be room for the grout, but the tile has to be at least 95% bonded. It's a delicate dance. And remember, the waterproof membrane and the heat mat is just below this tile. It's time for the grout, and grout makes or breaks a tile job. Don't make the mistake of thinking that because grouting is repetitive, it's an entry-level skill. If it's not done right, if it's either not put into the joints deep enough or put into the joints too deep, if it's washed off too far in or not taken completely off, you're going to be tearing this stuff out. Pay attention, and whoever does the job has to be trained. There are two types of grout. There's epoxy grout, and there's everything else. And epoxy grout is the best product you can use, and it's the riskiest. Now the upside is that once it's in place, it's non-organic, it's stain resistant, it doesn't promote mold or mildew, it's chemical resistant, it forms a mechanical and a chemical bond and it gets hard. I mean, it, it's a bulletproof grout solution. It's the only thing that Dave and Phil Hu use or recommend. But if you don't know how to handle it, it's gonna tear the world apart. Because once it's in, brother, it is in. We're going to have some more information about how to handle and work with epoxy grout in our final grout video that's coming up. But in the meantime, I just want to point out again how much I appreciate you coming to and enjoying and being part of what we're doing here in building this house. Thank you for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.